Hallelujah. Let us have a seat before God. I want to employ the choir to know that it is not a Yoruba church alone. We have English speaking people and every other people that have missed us. So let us continue to add maybe one or two English to our singing. I pray that God will hear us in the name of Jesus. In fact, all the songs that the choir teached out today is wonderful because it correlates with the lesson. I pray that the touch of God will fall upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you look at somebody and say, God is speaking to me. God is speaking to me. You see, today, we understand some things about life, especially with our church of grace, because we are in the church of grace, right? A church whereby we enjoy grace and grace and grace in abundance. And I pray that the grace will never be taken away from us in the name of Jesus. The title for today's word is this. Grace is not a measure of righteousness. Grace is not a measure of righteousness. Grace is not a measure of righteousness. And I pray that God give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is a question that I ask myself every morning when God give me the privilege to remember because sometimes I forget I am human and that question is why are you so good to me I ask myself why is God so good do you ask yourself that, that sometimes because I miss all the people on earth today God chose those that would die and those that would live and God gave you the privilege to become part of those that will live. I think we need to ask ourselves, why is God that very good to us? Hallelujah. Because many are dying. Many are perishing. Whatever I am now, it is by your grace. Whatever that we are right now, whether you are suffering, whether you lack food, you lack water, you lack air, whatever that it is, your issue. You still have hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have husband. You have hope to have husband because you are alive. You don't, somebody's not giving you promotion. You have hope to get promotion because you are alive. Those that are buried, there's no more hope for them. They have their hope is done and gone. I pray that God will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you look at someone and say, God is so good to me. So Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The lesson that was read today, I want us to have a Bible with us. And I want you to look at each word as we go through it. We are going to be reading. We are going to be probably maybe it's going to be a form of teaching. So that we can get understanding. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. The first verse there said, The word of the Lord came to me. Can you touch yourself and say, The word of the Lord came to me. So the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. This is to tell us that this word is not the word of man. It's not coming from maybe one demon or one angel that is not attached to God. It's coming directly from God. And this word said, I want somebody to read from verse 2. What did it say from verse 2? Read 2 through to 5. Someone with, with a mic, please. Yes. 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 Jerusalem. Yes. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your ancestry and your birth is in the land of the Canaanites. Uh -huh. Your father was an Amorite. Your father was an Amorite. Uh -huh. And your mother a Hittite. And your mom an Hittite. On the day you were born, yes. 
your cord was not cut. On the day that you were born, your cord was not cut. Uh huh. No were your nor were you washed with water to make you clean. Yes. Nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in cloth. Yes. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Yes. Rather, yes. you were thrown out into the open field. Yes. For on the day you were born, you were despised. Yes. Then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood. Yes. And as you lay there, in verse your five. Body. Stop at verse five. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said to verse five. Eba me do we do wa jiri mo ya ma to she leri to si mu ma je mu she aye lo to aye lo to Jesus mi lo ku eba mi eba mi yo eba mi eba mi yo eba mi Eba mi yo mo yi baba lo go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us have a seat before God. I want us to understand something. God here is speaking to the Israelites. Jerusalem is used as the word to cover Israel. Because that's their biggest heritage. Sidama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to look at this. Who delivered Israel from all their troubles? God, right? And he now brought them to a place of joy. But after they got everything that they have, what did they do? So today, after they have done so much wrong and they have kicked against God, God now sent a word to Ezekiel to speak to the house of Israel. That I want you to remember that you guys were nothing when I found you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were hopeless. They were helpless when God found them. They were crying. They had no king of their own. They have no ruler of their own. When God found them. They depended on the master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God helped them. So God is telling them because it has gone to the level. They enjoy so much grace like we are enjoying right now. To the level that even anytime they want to speak, they speak as Abraham is our father. And because Abraham is their father, they believe all things is well. And because they have so much grace from God, they believe that all that they are doing has no repercussion. Hallelujah. That was why God is reminding them here. If you look at that verse number three, he told them, that your father was an Amorite and your mother an Hittite. It's like telling them that your parents were pagans. We are the worst of all pagans before I called you. You guys were nothing before I called you. Many of our fathers, not we that are born into Celestial Church of Christ, many of them were called out of paganism to worship God in Celestial Church of Christ. Many of them were called because of their trouble before they came into church. They were delivered maybe from sickness, some from madness, some from death before they became a member. But after God has brought them in and has made, given them the grace to join this church of God's goodness, what did they do? So God is reminding Israel, look, don't think that because you are the children of Abraham, you are something. You were nothing. Your father, your forefathers were pagans before I called you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Imagine if someone tells you that. You should know that you've provoked the person to that level. God said in his word, I want you to look at the Bible, Ezekiel 16, for those that have just 
coming to the church, we are looking at Ezekiel 16. Verse 4 said, on the day that you were born, your cord was not cord. Your, you, you, you were not washed with water. You were not clean. You were not rubbed with salt or wrapped in clothes. And verse 5 made it worse. I want you to look at it. I said, no one looked on you with pity and had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field on that day that you were born. You were despised. Hallelujah. They were hated. And they were thrown out for the dead. That is the way we are without God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When someone is without God, you are out there for the taking. If you don't have Christ, you are out there for Satan to do whatever that he feels to do with you. If you are not truly repentant to God, you are just out there as a dead living among the living. We will not be dead in the name of Jesus. Amen. So Israel in the beginning was helpless. They were hopeless. They were hated. They were despised. When I was reading this, I could remember every of my child, except for one, I would always stand there to make sure that I see when they come out. And each time that my wife has to go through all of this cutting and bringing out, sometimes I feel nauseated. And you know, you can puke like in such place. And there is so much anger sometimes because I'm waiting. But once this child is out and I carry it in my hand, every of my troubles disappear. I am like the happiest man on earth. Now imagine somebody having their own child and not wash the child and not clean the child. And not put a cloth around this child, but put this child out in the open, in the field, where you have maybe sunlight that can scorch that child to death. You have maybe coldness that can scorch, that can kill the child. Or maybe you have wild animals that can take this child for the killing. That was how the life of Israel was before God pulled them out. I bet that was how the life of many were before they joined this church. Many were like nobody. When I look at the things that people do in Celestia Church of Christ right now, it gets to me. Somebody that was a nobody, God called you in, made you somebody, and now you feel that everybody is nothing to you. Hallelujah. It is a very bad thing to neglect God. When a child is thrown out into the field, all that the person that threw the person, the child out, because even if you want somebody to take that child, you have to clean it, make it look good, and they put it in a nice place, you know, like Moses. They made him look good and put him by the riverside where they know someone will find him. But if you put a child just there, take it to the forest and just say, without washing, without anything, that means you want that child to die. I want to tell you that there are many in this life that does not want you to progress. There are many in this life that does not want you to advance. There are many in this life that are ready to take you as a prey if you do without God. But God is just standing there. I want somebody to open the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 to 13. And somebody in the choir, Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. Verse 21. Somebody in the women's side, open or in the men's side, it doesn't matter. Ephesians chapter 2, read from 12 to 13. And somebody in the choir, Colossians 1, I want the Ephesians first. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. 12 to 13. Remember that at that time, yes, you were separate from Christ. Remember that before you were born again, you were separated from Christ. Whether you are coming to the church and you are still not born again, you are separated from Christ. 
until you give your life to Christ. That is when you become yoked with Christ. Uh huh. Excluded from citizenship in Israel. Excluded. You see, the time that Israel were going through their bondages, whatever, they were excluded from citizenship as the children of God. They were not included. Uh huh. And foreigners. Yes. To the covenant of the promise. They were foreigners to the covenant of God's promise. Uh huh. Without hope. They were without hope. And without God in the world. They were without God. You see, imagine somebody without hope, without God. That person is dead. That person can be walking, but the person is dead. He's spiritually not. I pray that that will not be our case in the name of Jesus. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, please. Sit down, sir. From 21. Once you were alienated from God. Yes. And were enemies in your mind. Before, we were enemies of God in our mind. Some people are still enemies of God in their mind. Do you know you can go to church and not be a Christian? You can just be that symbol that tells people that is celestial because they are wearing white. Until you have Christ in you, that is when you can become a Christian. Because the word Christian means Christ-like. People that act like Christ, speak like Christ, walk like Christ. Uh huh. Because of your evil behavior. Yes, because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body. But now you have been reconciled. Can you say, I am reconciled? I am reconciled. Uh huh. Through death to present you holy in his sight. God bless you. Sit down, man. God is trying to make Israel understand their origin. You are pagans. You were not children of God in the very, very beginning. I just choose you. Many of us think because of the things that we do, how marvelous we act, the gift that we have, the things that we speak, how eloquent we are when we preach. We think those are the things that makes us children of God. The grace that we enjoy in the church every day, every night, we think those are the things that make us children of God. I want to tell you today that grace is not compared to righteousness. It's two different things. As you have grace, so that sinner that even has not know God has grace. Hallelujah. Let us go to verse 6. Uh huh. Then I passed by yes. and saw you yes. kicking about in your blood. Yes. And as you lay there in your blood, yes. I said to you, yes. live. I said to you, leave. Uh huh. I made you grow like a plant of the field. Yes. You grew and developed and entered puberty. Yes. Your breasts had formed and your hair had grown. Yes. Yet you were stark naked. Hallelujah. That's verse 7, right? Yes, sir. Sit down. Man. I want you to write this down if you have a pen. Without God, we are helpless. Hopeless. And left for dead. Without God, we are helpless, hopeless, and left for dead. And I want you to write this second thing. God's, wo God's words gives life. Can we say that? Verse said, later, I passed by. And then I saw you. I saw your condition. And I said, leave. Imagine a word transformed the life of Israel. Do you know that just one word from God can make you reach the apex of God's goal for your life? Just one word. Hallelujah. Yeah. And this word of God is what most of us don't even read. God passed by Israel, saw that they are in the pool of blood. They are left for dead. They are hated. They are despised. They are hopeless. They are helpless. And God said, leave. Do you know how many times you were gone, even in your sleep? You were dead completely. And God said, leave. Do you know how many times you've been driving on your way and you were like, oh my God, it's happening. And God said, leave. Many times, 
some of our children would have crossed some paths that they're supposed not to jump off something that they're supposed not to and we were able to get there and hold them and then we think oh we were very fast no god said leave do you remember the time that you had so much stomach ache and you thought what is going on i don't even know what i ate you were rolling up and down and all of a sudden healing came because god said leave do you think it's because of the medication you took in fact, when I look at the TV and I see so much advertisement of medication and I see the things that can go wrong, I'd rather stay with what is wrong with me than go into that situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have a dick, but when you take the medication, you, you have stomachache, you can die, your blood can clot, you can, go to, you can become crazy, you have insomnia, you have amnesia, you have everything, you can die at the end of the day. Hallelujah. God said, leave. That is why we're still standing. I want to tell you that God's word gives life. Now the question is this. What is needed to move from a place of death to a place of life? What is needed to move from a place of desperation to a place of inspiration? What is needed to move from a place of imprisonment to a place of freedom? This is what is needed. The word of God. If you want to be liberated, it's the word. You want to become victory, it's the word. You want to be blessed, it's the word. Because the word of God gives what? Life. Israel were in bondage they cried to god and god said let my people go that was the word and they were delivered i pray that god will deliver us all in the name of jesus if you are with me shout hallelujah, hallelujah. one of the hymns that i love so much in celestial joy of christ is hymn number eight say jesus look we all Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need to know that him. Can you open him head? Emma Confi Can you I want somebody to read the English version? Yes. Jesus is calling you. Can you say Jesus is calling me? Oh, come. Oh, sinner, come. Uh huh. Jesus will offer prayers for you. Oh, sinners, come. Who is going to pray for you? Jesus. Who, this time around, who is praying for us? Many of the times we want to pray for ourselves. That is why when you are done praying, you have to say, not my will, but your Hallelujah. 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 Uh-huh. Oh, sinner, come. Yes. Jesus will not let you be ashamed. Who is not going to let you be ashamed? Jesus. Why are we so trying to make sure we are not ashamed? You want to ask a your friend, ah, so that they will not say, I'm ashamed. Oh, I have to go borrow money to do this. Oh, I have to go do this. Oh, so that they will not put me to shame oh, I have to do this that is all that we do but Jesus said I will not let you be put to shame so all we have to cling on to is Jesus uh-huh your load is heavy indeed oh come your load is heavy indeed yes every of our load is heavy we think of the husband the wife the children my job how I'm going to sleep how I'm going to eat how I'm going to cook all those things are heavy every works how my business must progress how to get promotion all of those things are every works and christ is saying come uh-huh oh sinner come yes jesus will remove your load from you jesus will remove this load and carry it for you imagine if somebody takes and just tell you holy show every of your problem from now on is done just tell me what you need and it's done do you know that's a blank check that christ is given to us give me your load let me carry it but most of the time we don't want to give christ our load we want to fix it by ourselves 
when Elijah saw Elisha in that field, what did Elisha do? Once the cloak was placed upon him, he went back and burned everything that had brought him to him. Many of us, when Christ say, come, give me your load. We say, Christ, I am here, but let me carry it. May that not be our case in the name of Jesus. Uh-huh. Today you should give your mind to him. The only thing is you have to surrender your mind. Where does all our thinking come from? Where does every action come from? Huh? We think, 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 think in the mind and, you know, with the art, with the mind and all that and boom, we start acting. But God is saying, give that to me. That is where the burden is. You're thinking, give it to me. Let me do the heavy work for you. Uh-huh. Oh, sinner, come. Yes. Today, you should give your mind to him. Today, not tomorrow, give your mind to Sit down, man. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is not obligated to help you. He cannot be cajoled to help you. He cannot be persuaded to help you. He will do it in his own will. But the only thing that we need to do so that Christ can help us is to give it to Christ. When you surrender, let's say I surrender to maybe my dad now. I said, Daddy, I can't fix it. It's yours. He will take charge and will begin to work it out. But if you, I'm trying myself to make sure it's fixed, he can just stand and be looking at me till when I ask for his help. That is the same way we are to Christ. Unless you ask Christ for help, unless you deliver that thought, that big thing to him, those things that worry you, those things that make you feel, you know, at times you can't sleep, you're thinking about this, oh my God, it's another year again, it's another day again. God, when are you going to do this? Give it all to God. Africa, God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He said that I made you grow. Verse 7. I made you grow like a plant of the field. You grew up and developed and became the most beautiful of jewels. If you give it all to God, God will make you grow to the level that you become the envy of many. I pray that will become so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number three, I want you to write this down. God's unrestrained love transforms. God's unrestrained love transformed. God's unrestrained love transformed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us look at verse 8. I want somebody to read from verse 8. You read 8 through to 14. 8 through to 14. Ezekiel 16. Later. Yes. I passed by. Yes. And when I looked at you. Yes. And saw that you were old enough for love. Yes. I spread the corners of my garment over you. Yes. And covered your naked body. Yes. I gave you my solemn oath. Yes. And entered into a covenant with God you. God now entered. Once you give, today give your heart to Christ. Once you give that heart, that thinking, that thought, that mind, every of those body to Christ, he enters into a covenant with you that you would never be put to shame. Uh-huh. Declare the sovereign Lord. Yes. And you became mine. Yes. I bathed you with water. Uh huh. And washed the blood from you. Yes. Put ornaments on you. Yes. I clothed you with an embroidered dress. Yes. And, and put sandals of fine leather on you. Yes. I dressed you in fine linen. Yes. And covered you with costly garments. Yes. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your on your arms. Yes. And a necklace around your neck. Uh huh. And I put a ring on your nose. Yes. Earrings on your ears. Yes. And a beautiful crown on your head. Yes. So you were adorned with gold and silver. Uh huh. Your clothes were of fine linen. Yes. And costly fabric. Yes. And embroidered cloth. Yes. Your food was honey. Yes. Olive oil. Yes. And the finest flour. Uh huh. You became every beautiful and rose to be queen. You rose to become a queen. The apex of man's life. In the old day, it would become maybe a king or a queen. That's the, that's the highest of it all. God is telling you today that if you can give it all to him, 
is going to make you become a king as a man or a queen as a woman. That means you become the king in your home, the queen in your home, the king and the church, the queen and the church. At your place of work, people see royalty in you. They see that glory that no one has. May that be your case in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down for a moment, sir. Can you look at somebody and say, I am adopted and adorned. One thing with God is when God adopts you, he does not leave you for the dead. He begins to give you the things needed. The best kind of food. The best kind of clothing. Imagine then, he's talking about all of this. If now you know we are, uh, we've already upgraded. God's plan is to make sure that you grow into royalty, not into poverty. God's plan is to make sure you become excellent in all ways god's plan is to make you exceedingly great this is not about becoming a billionaire or a trillionaire or a zillionaire whatever that you aspire to become that is not a sin but i'm saying that is not what they call wealth wealth is when you have the finances and you have good health with it you never lack anything you don't have too much you don't have less you are comfortable I'm not talking about when you try to all things. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the thing is, even when they were left out for the dead as a child, then what they needed help with was the natural element to be defended from the natural element of life. The sun, the water, maybe animals that are running around. But now, if you look at that verse from verse 8 to 14. When you are now grown, then you have to worry about the things of self. Can, you, can somebody say self? Yeah. That's the problem that most of us have. Self-sufficiency. self centeredness Most problem that we have now is about self. And God wants to help us with that. As a young adult in Christ, we have all of the self-awareness. You know, some people, when they become, they say they, uh, be, you know, I become aware of my surrounding, and that surrounding will just make them go to hell. Some people will say, you know, I become self-conscious. And by becoming self-conscious, they don't even know the tread, the path they are treading is not for the consciousness, the freedom of their mind is to entrap them. And that consciousness will take them into a big trap that they can't get out. That they can't get out of. Do you know people that join cults, that join all of this, are actually seeking spiritual growth, consciousness, awareness, acceptance. Self-acceptance is one of the things that kills most people. I want to be accepted in the church. I want to be accepted in my house. I want to be accepted by my friend. I want to be accepted by the society. I want to be accepted with God. You have to choose one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now that this child that Christ picked up, that God picked up, that was left for the dead, is now grown. That God that made this child to become a queen. Do you know how many people that are envious of you? Just with the little thing that you think you have. Even that little thing is making someone so mad, so envious. Why must it be only her? Why must it be only him? They buy their clothes from whatever designer that they buy theirs from. You will go to Walmart or some other place and get yours. And they're still looking at your shirt. Where did you get this shirt from? <laughs> it is not because of anything. It's because of the glory of God in you. Because it is not about what we are. It's about what they can see. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 14. And somebody to open 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. Ephesians chapter 1, somebody with a mic, please. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 14. Praise be to the God, uh -huh. the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. who has blessed us in heavenly rel realm yes. with every spiritual blessing in yes. Christ. For, for he chose us before the creation of the word god has blessed us with you see people sometimes think the blessing of this life has to do with money 
if you are blessed in all ways spiritually, I bet you that financial increase will come to you. If God can bless you so much that you have the necessary insights that you're supposed to have, the necessary ideas that you're supposed to have, the necessary knowledge and wisdom that you're supposed to have, to make money, to do well in life will become a thing, a simple thing. Can you look at somebody that says simple thing? Simple thing. Imagine if God can give you a mindset of how to dominate, even at your place of work. It is only God that can give this. To, to, to be able to, there's so many people that comes up with all of these ideas. And at the end of the day, these ideas give them so much money that they don't even think of where they were starting with that idea. If you can look unto God, because God has given us all these things. He has given us himself in totality so that we can have everything that is called good. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh-huh. To be holy and blameless in his sight. Yes. In love, he has predestined us for adoption. In love, God has predestined us for adoption. Uh huh. For sonship. Yes. Through Jesus Christ. Through Christ. Uh huh. In accordance to his pleasure and will. Yes. To the praise of his glorious name. Yes. Which he has freely given us in the, in the one he loves. All these things are freely given. Let me tell you, if you're still wasting money on some things that you're not supposed to waste, in, waste money on, that's your situation. Most of things are freely given. I tell people, the closer you are to God, the more you know, the less that the devil troubles you. What I mean is, when the, trouble, when the devil comes with, the, with his trouble, you already, God has already given you a way out. But if you are running after from pillar to post, from pillar to post, from pillar to post, from pillar to post. Then you give him room because that shows that you have doubt in your belief. Then you give him room for the enemy to use that as a yardstick to tell God even that look at the person that you want to adorn with so much splendor, with so much glory. Look at him going from boom, 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 boom. Is that faith or faithlessness? I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you get home, just read Ephesians, that's Ephesians chapter 1, 3 to 14. Somebody to open 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians 1, chapter 3. 2 Corinthians 1. Praise be three. to the God. Yes. And Father. Yes. Praise be to God. Yes. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. The Father of compassion. Yes. And the God of all comfort. Yes. Who comforts us in all our troubles. Yes. So that we can comfort those in any trouble. Yes. With the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Hallelujah. God's plan to comfort you is that so that you can comfort others. People don't know that your spiritual gift is not for you. It's for somebody else. Every gift that God has given to you is not only for you to just myself, 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 myself. If you're a prayer warrior, God has made you a prayer warrior so that you can pray not only for yourself, but for others. If you are a preacher, God has given you the power to preach. Not because that preaching is only for you to get edified. It's so that others can be converted. If God has blessed you financially, that blessing is not only for you to eat, 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 and then get double belly or three, um, is it triple cheeseburger or fourth food or become the fourth food cheeseburger or whatever that you want to become. That is not the situation. It is so that people around you can be blessed. If you're blessed with how to talk to people, also because some people just know how to talk to others, they know how to calm people down. It is not just only for you and your children. It is so that you can give also to others. The question is with all of these things that God has given to you, what have you done with it? What? have you done with it your life that your life that god has given to you what have you done with it in terms of helping others the grace that god has given to you that we keep saying grace 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 we come in the morning grace is your glory of it your glory of we sing that song what have you done with that grace 
Because verse 15 says something about the Israelites. I want you to look at verse 15. Verse 15 said, I want you to look at, I'm going to read here. But you trusted in your beauty and used your fame to become a prostitute. You lavish your favors on anyone who passed by and your beauty became his. Which means anyone that passed by Israel, Israel poured that beauty that God has given to him on that person. And that beauty that was supposed to be for Israel becomes the person. Do you know that God has blessed you with a kind of glory? But you know sometimes it is not us, the enemy, those that hate us, they give their glory for somebody else to just use because they don't value what God has given to them. Do you know how many people's glory has been taken just because they, they have a wrong partner? went into a wrong relationship mingled with the wrong person and then once the glory is given to another it is for another you cannot use that it is for that person and i want you to look at your bible very well so that you understand he said you you took verse 16 he said you took some of your garments to make gaudy high places where you carried on your prostitution such things should not happen or should they ever occur many of us take the things that god has given to us and be make it become an idol sometimes it is the money that becomes idol we worship that money so much that we want to keep holding on to it hallelujah. hallelujah you know some people worship their husband so much that whatever the husband say that is final if god says go up and the husband say to obaguki they will just say no they will stay down some people worship their pastor so much well that when the pastor tells them something, in fact, if that thing has to make them disrespect the husband in the house, they will go home and disrespect that husband. Because now, they have made that pastor a god. Some of the things that God has given to us, we've made it a god. Some people, it's the gift of prophecy. And now you are blessed so much that you can see, hear, and know things to the level now that nobody can tell you anything. Hallelujah. I want you to look at someone that said, ingratitude towards God is a bad thing to do. Because let me tell you why it's a bad thing to do. It leads to spiritual adultery. Many of us do this every day. Ingratitude towards God. If you wake up in the morning and you just say, thank you, Jesus. It is ingratitude towards God. It's as simple as that. And if you don't thank God, you are thanking somebody else. You might be thanking yourself. You might be thanking the devil. You might be thanking the spirit, an angel, or whatever. But the point is, if you don't thank God, you are not with God. So Israel got better and began to give all of these things out. Everything that God has given to Israel gives out. If you look at verse 17, it gave, it gave out all our jewelry, gave out all our gold. Just because of prostitution. Do you know many of us do that? It's not, I'm not talking about physical prostitution. We mingle God with some other things. Today, you are at church. Tomorrow, you are somewhere else. Maybe even in six hours time, maybe. You call Jesus in the morning, call Eriwoya at night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm? You, you come at church, sacrifice. Bring good sacrifices to God in terms of thanks offering. And then they needed a dog for Ogun at home. You send money again. You know, everything now double, double. Hallelujah. You want to get blessed here, you want to get blessed there. And then you begin to prostitute yourself. I told us something. Whoever that you yield to controls you. It's as simple as that. If you yield to God, God will control your life. If you yield to the devil, it controls you. I pray that God will continue to control our life in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the number four of that point is ingratitude towards God will always lead to spiritual adultery. Israel behaves as if they have amnesia. You know, like many people. That's how we behave. We forget so easily. The things that we're supposed to recall is what we quickly forget. Imagine God took them through the Red Sea. Sea departed this side, this side. 
me walk in the middle, dry ground, wave of the sea on the right, wave of the sea. And then after they got out of that, yes, they did not believe that God could provide a meal for them. A God that did that for you, and you can't believe that that God can provide meal for you. Is that not amnesia? Is that not what they call amnesia? Forget it, be quick. A God that made the enemies of Israel to be to collapse in the sea, get destroyed in their own, that they can see it. All of these people that want to kill them getting killed. But then you get to the boundary of Canaan, and then the giants become something that you believe that your God not handle. These people are so big, they know the sons of Anakin are so big, they are so tall, we can't handle them. And then make made a journey that is supposed to be 40 days, 40 years. Do you know sometimes we do the same thing? We have troubles, and we believe these troubles is so big. And then we think that God, if we talk to God ourselves, God cannot handle it. We have to go to other higher places to find the God in those higher places so that we can get we can have solution. And then we will be saying that God did not answer me this week. But God is waiting. When you come back and you surrender, He will do it. But if you keep going this way, that way, everywhere, you'll be looking. Because it's the same God. Let's look at it. Is it not the same God that made the heaven and earth? Call him any name that you want to call him. Call him universe. Call him light. Call him God. Call him Shineke. Call him Allah. Whatever name that you want to call him. It's still God. A God that gave them all the instruction. They acquired all this instruction. This instruction took them to Canaan. They got Canaan. And once they got begin to eat that nourishment, enjoyment, they acted as if they have never received any instructions from God. Like they had no law. Nothing. Is that not the way we behave sometimes? We tell our children, don't do this. If you do this next time, I'll whoop you. And then for one, two days, they don't do it. And then maybe like a week, boom, they started. Even with happens with wife and husband. My husband, I don't like this. He says, okay, I'm sorry, my dear. I'll never do it again. Give it a week, too. After the wind blows over it, amnesia sets in. Do the same thing. And then you hear like, ah, I, t- I thought I told you. I'm sorry. That is the way we are to God. We will come to God today. We said, God, I, Father, Lord Jesus, I surrender everything to you. Give it all to you. Take all glory. Amen. And then we walk out. And then we see something. And then we say, Jesus, just wait. Let me finish this. We, we finish. The, we talk later. We will not fall in the name of Jesus. Amen. Two things were the problem of Israel. Number one, verse 15 said they trusted in their beauty. What are you trusting in? God gave Israel the beauty. But instead of trusting God, they trusted their beauty. What, are, what has God give, given to you as a security that makes you feel you're secured even without God? What is that thing that God has given to you that makes you feel so secure that even without God, act that this? Verse 22, they forget about their humble beginning. When you forget about your humble beginning, you've already lost it. That is what is happening in Celestial Church of Christ right now. Many have forgotten their humble beginning when they were kneeling down outside the church here and they were singing in aid for them. Some of them were crying. Telling God, God, if you can take all this trouble away from me, ah, I promise, I promise. It's easy to promise then. Some people had no child, and God, and they tell God, God, if you can, ah, bless me, I will worship you to the end. Right now, they are in maybe redeem, living faith, or something. They are in one church or the other. They've forgotten about that God. And then they were wondering why things are not going right. Once you make a vow before God, you have to fulfill it. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. People forget humble beginning because of fatness. When they grow big, now I am the man. That's why I told you, my my, my friends, keep praying for me. Because when people get to a level and everything starts setting in, there's a spirit that flows with money. Some of the spirit that flows with money is the spirit of arrogance and pride that makes others look like they are nothing and you are now the man. There's a spirit that flows with when God gives you power. It's the same spirit, arrogance and pride. 
sometimes self-centeredness. And then you begin to say, come to my church and I will heal you. Not, it's not even in the name of Jesus anymore. Come to my church and I will deliver you from all your troubles. Like you are now Jesus. When God gives you with so much gift that you can see everybody. Once you begin to see what somebody eats in the morning, what somebody eats at night, know there is trouble coming. Hallelujah. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Trust not in your beauty. Trust not in your gift. Trust not in your pastor. Yes, I'm a pastor. I'm telling you this. Trust not in no one but in God. Yes, you can respect people. Yes, you can honor them. Yes, you can have trust in them. But not the trust that you want to give to God. Not anything my shepherd she say is final. And then your shepherd tell you, go eat puke. And then, are you going to eat it? To love God passionately, you have to constantly read his word. Let us go to the second Bible reading. The book of Luke. Somebody to start reading from verse 1. I think it's verse 1 to 9. Luke chapter 13. Do we have a Bible? If you have a mic from verse 1. Now. Is it only the men that are getting blessed today? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will all be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. verse that, uh, from verse 1. Uh-huh. Now there were some presents at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Please, I want you to read like a Yoruba man. Let's not read too fast. One of the things that I want us to look to look at here is this. Christ is now relating the first lesson to we that are here. Pilate made a sacrifice with some people that have done wrong. And then the people came to tell Christ about this doing uh-huh verse 2 jesus answered uh-huh do you think that these galileans were worse sinners than all other galileans because they suffered this way the question is do you or do myself think those that are dead those that are buried those that are driving they didn't do anything wrong they had accidents and they died those that I've, I've not killed anyone. I've corona and I've died. Those that have not done even the stupid things that we do and are dead, do you think they are worse than us? Do you think why it, it is just because they are worse? They might have, they, I think they might have done something so bad for God to kill them. Do you think that's the situation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh huh. I'll tell you. Yes. No. I tell you no, uh huh. But unless you repent, yes, you too will all perish. We will not perish in the name of Jesus. Amen. That is why I tell you, grace is not equivalent to righteousness. All that we have is grace to be alive, to walk, to eat, to be able to have a house, to have a car, to have a husband, to have wife, to have children, to have a church, to whatever it is, it is because of the grace of God. We did not do anything to warrant any of those things. It was just God's will giving it to us. So when you now see people that things, you know, sometimes, especially we Africans, something will happen to somebody say, ah, it deserve it. Who tells you it deserve it? Don't you deserve worst? Let's let's begin to look at it. Have you not lied against anyone before? Have you not looked at anyone and hated the person before? I bet there was a time that if they give you a gun to shoot someone, you will not count two. If before they say one, boom, the person is dead. <laughs> and God said to us that if only we just think about it, it is an action already performed. Not until you do it. You see somebody's wife, you're looking at the person. You look, you see somebody's husband, you start thinking of whatever. And then some, something happens to someone say, ah. That person is a bad person. He has done so much worse. He deserves more. Who tells you that you deserve better? I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh-huh. 
Or those 18 who died when the tower in Cilium fell on them. Yes. Do you think they were more guilty than all the others? Let us go to verse 6. Verse six. Then yes. he told this parable. Now Christ is telling us this parable so that we can understand that the grace that was given to us is not a measure of our uprightness or righteousness. It is not a measure of our being a saint. The grace is given for this purpose. Uh huh. A man, yes, had a fig tree. A man has a fig tree growing in his vineyard. Yes, and he went yes. to look for fruit on it. He went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. But did not find any. Uh huh. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard. Yes, for three years now. Uh huh. I've been coming back. I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree. Yes. And I haven't found any. Yes. Cut it down. Cut it down. Uh-huh. Why should he why should he use up the soil? I want you to underline that. Why should that tree use up the soil? Uh-huh. Sir. Yes. The man replied. Yes. Leave it alone. Yes. For one more year. Uh-huh. And I will dig around it. Yes. And fertilize it. Yes. If it bears fruits next year. Yes. Fine. Yes. If not. Yes. Then cut it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your seat. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know that myself and you are a tree planted by God? Yeah. And God is expecting that we are supposed to produce fruit that is worthy of his planting and every year maybe yours might be yearly maybe some might be minutes some might be months god visits to see if we are actually producing what he expects us to produce but i i'm going to tell you this this is actually true you know some many times that it comes we are not producing the right fruit Instead of him finding the fruit of love, it's hatred. You find jealousy. You find adultery. You find fornication. You find money laundry. You find self centeredness. You find any kinds of things. And so each time, the purpose of God is why is that tree taking up the soil? I can plant something else there. Do you know for everyone that dies, that's a replacement. Even sometimes there are six, seven, eight. There are more that come than more that go. But you know what? Christ always says no. Let, let me help him through the Holy Spirit. You know, make some things around him, put some good soil. Maybe when you come back next, he should have gotten a better fruit. That is the purpose of the grace that you have. Grace is never righteousness. Every time Christ is trying, that's why sometimes he will send his word to us. It might be a prophet tell you, this is what God wants you to do. There are some things you're doing, stop it, don't do this. Sometimes this comes through in someone. Sometimes it can come through a madman. I've seen a madman minister to me several times. It can come through your wife, even at a time of anger. Don't throw it away. It can come through you. Do you know that the time of anger is where we actually speak the truth to each other? Okay. And then the husband can tell the wife, you know, that's how you be snoring every night. Stop snoring. And all that. He never told her. She never knew she snores. But he just let it out there. Boom. And then the wife would him, I snore. Me? I don't think I did. Christ is always trying to make sure that we produce the right fruit. Fruit of the spirit, not the fruit of the flesh. Christ is always trying to make sure when God will come to visit you. Some people God come to visit them every night. Imagine they are already sleeping, snoring. What if God just say, "This is the time; is done. Let me cut him off, or cut her off." What would be your righteousness before God, or is it the grace that we want to present to God? Your grace is sufficient for me. You know, sometimes that's always the grace is sufficient for me. The grace is sufficient for me. The grace is sufficient. Yeah, yes, the grace is sufficient. But if you keep pushing Christ away, 
I was thinking deep yesterday and I thought within myself, for to go to hell, you know it takes a lot of work that to go to heaven. I'm telling you, don't you know? To go to heaven, what do you have to do? Give God your mind, your heart, follow him, boom. But you know to go to hell, you have to do a lot of work. Oh. Kill, if possible. Adultery, fornication. What, what are those things? There's so much things to do to go to hell. You have to like walk over Christ and push, because Christ will always try to make sure you go to heaven. So for you to go to hell, you must have done so much and push Christ out of the way and renounce your citizenship, then you go to hell. But you know many of us are walking around that route. We are walking towards the route of renouncing our citizenship by ourselves. Something that Christ has handed over to us. Because once you are in Christ, you are a new creation. But once you get out of Christ, what about that? Uh, it's a bit, if you have the hope, you must have the down. If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. If you get out of Christ, what do you become? Because if the word says, when, if you are in Christ, which means there's an outside of Christ. We cannot just read the Bible one way and just believe, oh, because God said, if I'm in Christ, all things have passed away. Now I become new. This and that. That. And then you let go. And then you start walking out of Christ, out of Christ, out of Christ. And you think you're in Christ. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to use this time to reflect on this grace that we have. Look at the gift that God has given to you. The blessing that God has given to you. And use that as a point of reference. To become a blessing to many. Let the words that come out of your mouth. Your meditation. Your thinking. Your actions. Speak Christ. When we came last week. We said we have Christ. When you are here today. Do you have more of Christ? Or is it less than what you have last week? You know some people every time they come to Christ. Christ gets reduced. That will not be our case in the name of Jesus. Amen. We need to always in crime. And I pray that God us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Quickly bow your head and begin to ask that Christ will come into you. Ask that the Holy Spirit will come into you. If you're watching me online, pray that the Holy Spirit will come into you. That the Holy Spirit will become your guide. Because it said that when the man that planted it comes, the owner of the vineyard comes. And he does not find the right fruit. He can say cut it down you have an advocate in christ but i want you to ask that as christ advocates for you that you would not walk out of christ you will not walk into crisis <laughs>